A very good evening, a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us on Two Full Tossers. A uh, show this evening brought to you by the Ritchie Ryle Museum of Cricket Art, which holds over 82,000 pieces of cricketers in various stages of awarding, being awarded paintings, are actually mostly paintings of people receiving paintings, of paintings, of things that they have done, which necessitated the commissioning of a painting. And we're very happy to have Richie's blessing for this particular evening, and even more happy, happier, to have Mr. Allen Committee in sparkling form and back on two full tosses. Good evening, Alan. So what a delight, what a pleasure uh, to see your beautiful face. I know you've had a busy day, and that you've managed to make it in time for this nine o'clock appointment. I'm thrilled and delighted. And uh, episode 19, can you believe it? 19, is it, or 18, or, or between, 18.3, we don't know. The point is we're here, we haven't been told to leave, so something's going right, or reasonably right. Well, I, I did some calculations on the Duckworth-Lewis method. This Go is on. our 12th episode uh, so far, uh, and yet we've still lost in the second last over uh, to Malawi in the World Cup final uh, based on a system nobody will ever know. Uh, I want to talk to you about some really interesting cricket in just a moment, uh, but before we do, there are, there are two main reasons people log on to this show. Uh, one of them Great. is for a very special guest, and today we have an extraordinarily special guest. He might be the most exciting young fast bowler we have had in world cricket since... Oh, probably, probably Lungi and Gidi, and that was weeks ago. Uh, so I'm very excited. But the other thing, the other reason people log on, because they're extra excited, is to find out who Alan's lost legend will be. Now, we only announce this a little later on in the show, but you very generously give us a clue. So throw up that picture, if you will, and let's see who your lost legend is. Now, there he is. He's not a South African, but he did play in South Africa. Uh, and uh, I delighted in his performances in the late 80s, early 90s. Do you know who he is? There he is behind a stack of microphones. If you do, uh, take your chubby little fingers and type in something into the chat box. Uh, this is a slightly trickier one, but a fantastic bowler. And this, of course, reflects kindly on our uh, guest this evening. I'm very excited to chat to him as well. So let's find out in a couple of moments who that lost legend is. Do you know who it is, Dan? Um, he has a suspiciously similar looking lack of neck, but I'm not sure if that is the right person or not, what? but I will find out from you a little <laughs> later on in the show. Um, I have to say I'm very happy because we have this, uh, this wonderful, almost uh, uh, fraternal relationship uh, where yeah. your welfare is so close to my heart and vice versa, and you're looking a little less distressed at the fact that it is now four weeks since you have been able to not watch the IPL. That's right. And uh, well, having said that, I just started to feel kind of calm and, and quite pleased about not having to watch, not not watching, not watching, not 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 watching. So that's a seven uh, triple negative, which means it's a positive not watching the IPL. And now they've, of course, talking about bringing it back in November or October or in September through December or even not at all this year. So the plans are afoot. Uh, it apparently even talks that our tour to India might be in jeopardy if they bring the IPL back. Let's hope that uh, that they can both live uh, in, in a similar time period, but that we can have both or just us and not the IPL. Either which way, I'm thrilled that I haven't had to watch any of it this last week. Now, it's only a matter of time before we get a call from Ravi Shastri uh, to request of us some guidance, some counsel as the sages of the world of cricket that we are. What do we do to sort out this not IPL situation? Well, I've got a couple of ideas, and I'd appreciate you bouncing back some of your experience, Alan. Now, one of them is perhaps uh, they were talking about possibly moving one of the England-India test series. We could play three or four of those IPL games during the lunch break during the fourth test. Oh, we're talking. Possibly not. Or maybe uh, the uh, the KFC mini cricket bakers, as it was in uh, in years gone by, we could maybe take something from them. And while a test match is playing and uh, somebody's playing out 17 overs of not really scoring, we maybe have a couple of IPL games just happening in the outfield, running between wickets and, and working there. I think one of those two could definitely work. Well, and then there's also lots of time because captains now take longer and longer to, to, to set fields and to start an over. So in between overs, we could probably get at least one game out. Um, so that could possibly happen. Um, if umpire Maria Rasmus is, is uh, officiating, it's quite a long walk 
and I say that with respect and love, from square leg to the wicket. You could probably get half an innings in there. And possibly see Mahendra Singh Dhoni play in both games at the same time, even though he's retired from Test cricket and yet somehow come back. Such is the opportunity that now presents itself to us, which I'm very excited and gives you an opportunity to simultaneously watch a Test match and not watch IPL while watching the Test match. Can we now, while we're talking about uh, um, resignations and or retirements, apparently A.B. de Villiers has officially uh, retired pre-retirement but post-resting before he's now stopped playing, but he is still available. Yes, I think he, he comes out of retirement just after lunch next Wednesday. It's quite a long lunch, and then he goes back into retirement before afternoon tea, and then comes out of semi-retirement for talks about retirement before properly retiring the next morning, and then leaving it open to interpretation, which I think is as it should be. And he said, he was very clear, he said he had discussions with Mark Boucher. He just didn't realise there were other team members and he had forgotten about that. And so he felt that he couldn't play because there were, were other team members. So really getting to grips with some of the niceties of cricket, uh, what a thrill, what a delight. And Is, um, it, is it time, Alan Committee, and I ask you this with a philosophical yeah. uh, intent, is it time now for A.B. de Villiers to declare himself a nation state and then enter the T20 on his own and play against the rest of the world just on his own, perhaps bowling and stumping off his own bowling and then coming in and running from both ends and possibly single-handedly winning the T20 as the state of de Villiers Abraham. It, listen, it would be unfair on every other uh, cricket playing nation, but perhaps it is time. It is time. He'd still have to go through the Maldives to quarantine, but I think it presents wonderful opportunities. I, I, I ask for it. I say, let's do it. Let's push for it. And, in, and if we need to go and quarantine with him in the Maldives, then we will find a decent reason to do that. A uh, question that came up in the immediate, I think, I think it was Neil Manthorpe uh, raising one of his excellent, excellent columns. Should we be picking people like Simon Harmer, Kyle Abbott? I think Wayne Parnell was mentioned in that column. Guys who've drifted off into the world of Colpac, uh, but are now possibly looking to drift back. Do we turn our backs on them and never speak to them ever again, remove them from Facebook, ignore their pleading tweets and refuse to like their TikTok posts? Or do we say, welcome back, there is an AB-sized shape hole and you 17 players could almost fill it? I say we bring them back, but we don't speak to them. We have a bit of both. You allow them to play, but they can't be in the dressing room. They've got to, from the car, they've got to dress in the car, pad up, go onto the field, do the things, have their separate lunch. So we get the best of all worlds and, and everyone's happy or not happy. Everyone's unequally happy. I or equally think. unhappy. Well, that's disappointment all around, which always makes us happy. Uh, we've got a really special guest tonight. I'm properly, properly, properly excited uh, to welcome him on, which we'll do in just a moment. Uh, but let's have a look. Uh, this is one of the big moments of the cricket world in digital television broadcasting every week. It's hours of painstaking research by Alan and his team, uh, by which we mean Alan. And it allows us to introduce for yet another week, Alan's Lost Legend. So there he is. I don't know if you guessed who it is. Uh, he is a he looked a bit. He looked a bit Gladstone Smallish. Well, now that's interesting. Uh, uh, he is a bit Gladstone Smallish, but in fact, uh, he's from the West Indies. Played for Barbados for many years. Is the half brother of Sylvester Clark, and this is Rod Estwick who played for Transvaal in uh, 1987 through 1990. In fact, in 1988, there he is, uh, arm over Rod Estwick. Uh, arm, this is an interesting one. In uh, 1988, he was the South African uh, uh, Annual Cricketer of the Year, 36 wickets at 16.4. I remember watching him, particularly in the B&H, uh, Benson and Hedges, uh, and day-night games. Superb, off a short runner, basically three or four steps, huge broad shoulders, uh, smashed the ball into the pitch at 140, high 140s, and very dangerous, superb bowler. He's no Lee Barnard, but he's he not. Is a lost legend. A shout out to Rod Estwick, who's doing some coaching now for some of the younger West Indian sides. Uh, mm -hmm. Exciting. The Marshant de Langer of his day, three pace run up and boom. Boom. And boom. And boom. boom. Yeah, you, oh, there we okay. go. Yes. Yeah. Right, I'm getting a 
getting up and excited. And, and that's because our guest today, now, if I mention, if I, if I were to say to you, give me, just just forget about that, just give me the surname, uh, a South African fast bowler who speaks of aggression, he speaks of pace, he speaks of a willingness to bowl 15 overs uphill into the wind while it's raining, if he needs to, and then still run round the field afterwards. Uh, what name comes to mind? Herbrand Krobler. Ah, yes. Well, if you translate that out of uh, the original Afrikaans, uh, the man uh, the man you're immediately thinking of is Intini. But we've not gone Makaya. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh. We've gone one better than Makaya Intini because this guy is younger. He's more athletic. He's better looking. He's faster. He's more fearsome. And most importantly, he was available to join us on short notice this evening. So please welcome our guest tonight. It is Tando Intini. Good evening, everyone. Oh, Mr. Intini, warm welcome. Good evening. Lovely to see you. I feel like I haven't seen you in about three hours. Yeah, it's been a it's been a while, eh? <laughs> Uh, it's been a while. We know each other, but uh, this is very exciting for Alan, who's a, a huge fan of uh, Intini's as a whole, uh, but Rick. very excited about watching you. Do you remember, Alan Committee, the first time you saw Tando Intini? I think I think he turned 14 last week, so he would have been about seven <laughs> when he started playing like, first-class cricket um, because he's this child prodigy. Do you remember the first time you either saw or heard the name Tando Intini, Alan Committee? Well well, that's right. No, the, the buzz was thick, wasn't it? Once you started playing provincial cricket, everyone started saying, this is a name to watch out for. And uh, for a while, I know you'd played a number of games before I finally got to see you on television. Uh, but when I did, that thin, wiry frame, at one point I thought it was a wicket, but it was in fact you moving towards the wicket. Smooth, delightful action, all the attributes of your dad. And as Dan has said, uh, but, uh, but a younger model, which uh, has to help a little bit. Uh, what's it been like, sir? Your uh, your first couple of years in the big leagues? Uh, it's been it's been fun. I can say say the least. It's been fun. It's been interesting. Um, it's been challenging, uh, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, lots of learnings taking place, um, and it's obviously a, it's a blessing to be part of uh, a few of the big guys playing in these big leagues. Now, I, I suspect that uh, you're a fabulous fast bowler. You've shown that already, but I suspect that your future actually lies as a batsman. Because I don't think there will be any batsman ever who will be so immune to chirping as you will be from having to block out the sound of your dad over the last two decades, who has to be the noisiest cricketer in history. I agree with you. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. <laughs> what is it? Because so, well, we'll get into the fast bowling in a moment. But most of the fast bowlers, I think of somebody like Mornay Morkel. Mornay insists to me that he should have had a hundred tests batting for South Africa at number three. Nobody else would ever agree, but he's adamant that this is the case. And most fast bowlers believe that hidden inside there is this Jacques Cullis just waiting to get out. How much fun do you have batting? Uh, what's it like when you get to the crease and uh, get a chance to wield that willow? Um. I enjoy that. I just feel it's time where you can be yourself. Um, you know, just try and build an innings and have fun out there. Um, also be deep within uh, the challenge that's coming at you the whole time. Um, it's also a lovely opportunity to test yourself if you can stay switched on for as long as possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's absolute fun. Do you ever hold yourself back from bowling a 175-kilometer-hour bouncer at another fast bowler in case he does the same to you later? Um, in cricket, you have to do what you got to do because eventually it's going to come your way. So you have, to, you have to give it back when you have to. So it's always a nice rivalry against all the seamers around the country. Um, see who can outdo in the middle. So it's always good fun. It's a lovely challenge. It hurts. It hurts sometimes, but I love it. I enjoy it. <laughs> what, was your, what was the relationship like uh, growing up? Uh, obviously, your dad would have been a, a, an immediate role model, and and you would have witnessed all his incredible feats. Was bowling was your first love? Did you come into cricket maybe preferring batting? Um, was cricket something that you wanted to do initially? How, give us a, a bit of a background. Um, I only started bowling twenty end of twenty sixteen. So I've only been bowling for a short while. 
Wow. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, that is so batsman. annoying. I, I was started bowling batsman. I was an opening <laughs> batsman for my school, Selborne College, before I moved to Cape Town uh, for all my provincial teams to land the 17. Um, and then when I moved to Cape Town, I kind of, well, I had to adapt and conquer and just see what else can get me into the big leagues. Um, so I haven't been burning for too long, to be honest. So I still I enjoy my batting. And... Uh, and the various teams I've been part of, we've been working on getting me to be that genuine, genuine all rounder in the next two, three years. That's outstanding. That's great news. You're a, you're a left handed bat, aren't you, sir? Yes, sir. Left handed bat, right arm, fast. <laughs> fast. And MBJ fielder. <laughs> I wish. I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've you've followed in your father's footsteps, and uh, not all kids do. Uh, Alan could have inherited the family plumbing business uh, oh. in Takai, which he didn't. Um, you know, I could have followed in uh, in my father's footsteps, uh, but I don't think that needs any further elaboration. Uh, you have gone into cricket. Was it always the case, or did you at some point think, you know, maybe I'll you know I'll just become a film star or a model or something? It's a lot easier. Um, I actually did everything at school, especially primary school. Um, played all the sports, rugby, soccer, tennis, swimming, uh, hockey, squash, everything, cricket. And then as I kind of went through the the age groups, I started cutting down on sports. So by the time I got to high school, uh, grade eight, I was playing rugby, cricket and hockey. And then by the time I got to grade 10, I was playing cricket only. So it's so I gave myself a fair chance in, in all of them, um, but I really enjoyed cricket the most and it was the most natural to me. So it was just a, a walk in the park, I guess. Cool. It's, uh, this is not good news if you're a batsman having to play against Tando and Tini. You've only been bowling for five years. You're already a first-class star, just signed for the Dolphins. One would suggest, rather nervously for the batting world, Alan, he's only likely to get better. Yes, sir. And we look forward to that, I'm sure, as well. What what happens? Uh, do you get the occasional uh, phone call from Dad uh, saying, uh, saw you on TV and uh, maybe you should be doing this and that? And um, can you take the advice? <laughs> not really. If he's not there commentating for majority of my games. Um, right. So we do have that father and son communication, but half the time we don't really chat cricket. Um, but if there is something that needs working on, then it's always there to assist. So it's it's an advantage to have against everyone where you don't have to look far for advice or help. Uh, we actually have someone at home that's gone through the journey uh, at all stages of the game um, to actually guide you and give you the advice you need. Um, so it definitely does help when making uh, decisions and choices, you know, to have him uh, next to me to advise and show me the way. So it's, you, it's lovely to have, have that. You, have you sometimes explained to him uh, what happens quite close to the wicket if when you're bowling in your delivery stride, you actually come in next to the wicket as opposed to three metres wide of it? Have you? Um, I think we've, we, we're kind of similar in terms of how wide we come on the crease. Really? Um, okay. I haven't been comfortable enough to be so close to the wicket because me and my dad, we do the same, we, we, we do the same thing. We shape the ball back, so that extra room does really help. So he's helped me quite a bit with that and being able to master that skill. But also it's not bad in actually listening to the coaches and having both skills where you can ball from both wide and closer to the stumps, which does add a bit to your armory. Um, so it's, it's, it's really good to have um, two sides of the story. Um, you can have someone to help you out when you're at home and w when you're training. So, killing two birds with one stone, huh? Yeah, but I think I, I think I spotted you at a shopping mall in Pretoria last week, uh, looking for a surf shop. Uh, not the best place to be looking for a surf shop, but no <laughs> reason for it, uh, because it's board shorts at the ready and touchdown next week in Durban for your new career as a Hebrew surfer with the Dolphins. Yes, sir. Uh, first thing, off to the beach. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's it. That's exciting. It's a it's a new chapter, and I'm I'm guessing, and oh, and I know because we've had this conversation before. It's just a chance to play some more cricket, uh, get into those headlights, and make sure that the the march on towards Team South Africa just happens a little quicker. Yeah, almost definitely. It is a big opportunity to to be in the starting lineup a lot more than I was at the Titans. Obviously, it's one of the better teams to be part of. Um, the Dolphins have done extremely well in the past few years and also have noticed that they are an extremely young squad, you know, where at the Titans, it's, it's a bit tougher for, for a young player to break through with so many pro tier players. But it's also a, a really nice place to be at to learn and grow and try and enhance your cricket. Um, but unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to to stay because I felt I need to capitalize on these next few years um, where I'm young and fresh. I I have the drive, you know, to get me to where I want to be and continue from that. So I felt Dolphins were, were my best bet. And obviously, I'm a coastal boy being born and raised in East London. So I'm very familiar to the conditions and I also really enjoy the beach. Hey, I also- oh, sorry. Yes, Alan. I was just going to say they're also the best bet dolphins, so that makes them the best bet, literally. I mean, <laughs> the best bet. <laughs> uh, Hollywood bets will love you for that, Alan Committee. Uh, <laughs> Alan Committee, as you may or may not know, Tando went to uh, Westerford, which yeah. is a small school uh, for uh, basically those in need of criminal reform. Um, uh, Gary Van Lochenberg, who's watching the show, says, What was it like? taking on Westford High at school level? Uh, we never did. I don't think they did. <laughs> no. 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 Um, they weren't, not to be arrogant or anything, but our school side was really good. Um, so we didn't even play Westford on weekends or... Oh, okay. Okay. You, yeah. you just lost a friend. Yeah, you just lost. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't it wasn't our choice to yeah. who we play. Um, All right. <laughs> but in my whole Weinberg stint, we have never played Westerford. I think our seconds and thirds played them. If okay. they like you. Okay, well, let me let me <laughs> before a fight breaks out here and the digital punches get thrown. Uh, just yes or no, yes or no. Uh, three quick questions for you. Have you ever taken a wicket against Westerford? Yes or no, Tando? No, never played. Have you ever scored a run against Westerford? Yes or no? No. Have you ever beaten Westerford? Yes or no? No. No, so there we go. So I think Alec Committee, you win. He's never scored a run against you, never taken a wicket, never beaten you. I think you could be happy there. Take a deep breath. Tando just nod. He gets very upset about Westerford. Let's just let him calm down. Take a deep <laughs> breath. Uh, go back and go back and look at your picture of Butter Dipinar and just <laughs> calm down, Alan Committee. <laughs> well, it's, it's not a fair shot that we didn't even set foot against them. Oh, I just, foot in the field. Oh, oh, <laughs> so. We're breaking up. We're breaking up. <laughs> All right, look, let me let you calm down because if I'm not mistaken, Alan Committee, have, uh, have you got a, a special guest who's coming along to join us? All right, well, well Alan Committee goes and calms down and uh, and stops himself from unfriending Tando on Facebook. Uh, we've got a very <laughs> uh, a very quick quiz for you. Are you ready for this quiz, Mr. Antini Jr.? 100%. So I can tell you that uh, the best of them, uh, how have we done so far? Uh, JP Dermany got one out of five. Uh, Darren Goff and Ashwell Prince got four out of five. Uh, so that's kind of your bottom and your top. Uh, so anywhere in between and you will be doing okay. Are we good to go? Crossing fingers, yep. All right. Let's start off. Question number one as a leading fast bowler. These all should be nice and easy for you. Which famous, where as he quickly checks Google, that's not allowed, uh, <laughs> which, uh, which famous West Indian fast bowler who is best known for his skiddy deliveries and a vicious, vicious bouncer played no small amount of cricket for Natal? Ooh. The time frame? Is it before uh, my time or like well, in the he's, 2000s? He's over the age of seven, so before your time. Uh, oof. played for Natal. Uh, pass. I don't know. The answer would be the great Malcolm Marshall. Oh, that's my dad's guy. 
Indeed. Not dissimilar. Also, both uh, very, very awkward characters to deal with. Right. Second question. Which Pakistani fast bowler is credited as having bowled the fastest delivery of all time? Um, I know this guy. Now the name's run away from me. It is um, Pakistan. Pakistan. Um, da-dum. Um, da-dum, da-dum. That his name has action. escaped me and he has the messiest action ever. He does indeed. He's got about a um, seven kilometer run up. Yes, yes, yes. The name has escaped my head. Um, Three, two, one. Two, ah, one. I lost a point there. Shaib Akhtar. Shaib Akhtar. Yes. All right, let's say naught from two. So this is an appalling start. If you'd gone to Westerford, you would have been much better at getting these. <laughs> uh, question number three. Let's go one, one that's a little easier. Uh, fast bowling records. The fast bowler who's taken the most wickets ever for England is James Anderson. Which mm-hmm. fellow fast bowler of his sits second on that list for England for most Stuart Broad. wickets? Stuart, Stuart Broad, Broad is correct. Well done. Having a Westerford moment. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. So that is one out of three. Uh, let's head just north of the border. Here's your next question for you. I would like to know who is the only Zimbabwean fast bowler who's been in the news recently for the wrong reasons to have taken over 200 test wickets? Oh, not only. He's coached in the IPL. He's coached in Bangladesh. He's mm. been in the papers in the last few weeks. For the uh, I'm, not a f- I'm not a fan of reading the paper, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he's geez. got a TikTok account, so that can't help. Zimbabwean. Uh, IPL. He's coached the IPL team. He um, has. He, he's, he's coached in the IPL. Coached in the IPL. I do not know, sir. The answer there would be Heath Streak. Heath uh, Streak. Match fixing. My dad Heath. told me about this a while ago. Jeez. <laughs> Need to pay attention more. Uh, all right. You've got one last question. Let's see if you can finish off on a high. Which South African all rounder is currently lighting up the county championship for Northamptonshire? Northamps. South African all rounder. Uh, who plays for Northampton? Uh, One out of four. Can you beat JP Dermany? Can't be win for now. Surely not. Uh, North Ends, North Ends, North Ends. I'm going Wayne Parnell, I think. Wayne Parnell is correct. That is the right answer. So well (laughs) done, Danny. That is two out of five. Uh, which is not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. So next time you bump into JP Dermany, tell him you, you beat him on the foot two full tosses cricket quiz. Shoot, I'll take that. At least I'm not the last one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before we wrap things up, and it's been an absolute delight having you on the show, uh, you're still only 20 years old. You're very early on in your cricket career. So this might be a little bit overwhelming. I'll need you to take a deep breath. He is one of the biggest names in South African cricket from an administrative perspective, known not just for his knowledge and understanding of the game, but for his somewhat unique interviewing technique. I shall hand you over to him. Be brave, please. Uh, An enormous amount of pleasure to welcome back to Two Full Tossers, the Honorary Vice Life President of the Griqualand North Scorers and Umpires Association. It is Manir Johan van der Volt. Boy, buy a donkey, buy. Thank you so much from you, uh, Daniel, and and welcome, Michel. Lekker om saam met Kleinsie en Ntini te praat. Nice to talk with small lad Ntini. Uh, welcome, welcome to the show, uh, pop, uh, Manier. Nice to see you. So tell me, <laughs> all right. There's no need to laugh, okay? Because I don't laugh when I look for you. There's no need for you to laugh when you look for me. Look, sir. Please, let's just be respectful for one another. That are all I ask. Hey, buy a donkey. Yes, you're very sunny. Eh? Look at you. So, Ma, <laughs> you see for yourself. Look, so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. As a young and as a young and it's so nice to, to be able to, to meet a person who's got all the in yeah, my teeth sometimes. I don't know if you have that sometimes with your teeth when it wants to come. <laughs> um, 
It is to have all the energy, you know. And for me, I want to know what's it like for a young man now to walk into a provincial site with, with all the old topics, all the old uncles who've been playing for years. Is it an easy uh, entry point or is there some collaboration? Collaboration that must happen. It, it, is a, it is a tough gig, to be honest. Um, because now you have to try and find uh, try and find your feet in the team. Um, yeah. Also, at the same time, you you try and be as expressive as possible, uh, but at the same time, trying to be as respectful as possible. So it's it is a tough one. But if if you just be yourself, it becomes a lot easier. So That's right. just I will also, I, so I wouldn't say it, it's the easiest, but you get used to it. I'm sure you do. Did you ever, besides your 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 your, pup, your puppy, did you ever a bowler that you were a, that were a hero of yours? Who did you look up for? Maybe for South Africa or from over the seas? Who for you did make you go? Whoa! I want to be like that football. Um, James Anderson. Yo, that's not now. That were not. That was not on board. I didn't expect from that. That is interesting. And he's about 117 years old. You can play for another 60 or 70 years and still not be at his age. <laughs> That's incredible. All right. Listen for me. I know this is going to be tricky because as a wine book boy, now we're going to ask some questions now. from Vicky Fragisra. It's like an exam, okay? You wouldn't have done these at your school because they don't do that, they do that education there yet. But uh, I'm going to ask quick ones. Now, you just choose one or the other, one or the other. Don't, don't think at all, okay? So that'll be easy. For a one sure. big one. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. For you, an in-swinger or an out-swinger? For you. In-swinger. In-swinger. For you, a yorker or a bouncer? Yorker. Moi. Uh, get a, a batsman LBW or Nick Toff? Nick Toff. Oh, nice. For you, who's better, Joffrey Archer or Kakiso Rabada? Uh, KG. That is a good answer and well done because that could have been awkward in any dressing room. All right. Who has a louder mouth? Eddie Murphy or Funkai and Tini? My dad. That's absolutely correct. Even Eddie Murphy has written in and he agreed with that. For you, is it a silly point or short leg if you had to feel it? Uh, silly point. Bowling against Coley or bowling against Arbia de Villiers? Uh, Vera Coley. Ooh. I like it. You're saying it's easier to bowl to Coley than it is to De Villiers. Uh, bowl to De Villiers. Uh, so I want experience bowling to Coley. Oh, ah, okay. Moi, moi, moi. If you had to add one thing, more pace or more swing? More pace. More pace. All right. Here's your tricky questions. Are you ready? You can play in a test match side for South Africa for five years or you can play only two games but in a World Cup winning side for South Africa. Test for five years. Good answer. And then the most important thing for you today, are you ready? As you ready, you so can For sir. you, scoring 220 as a batsman, coming in at number eight, or your dad scores that one run in the 4-3-8 game. You can't have both. You can have one or the other. Uh, the one run. Moi! That's a good answer. Now... Yesterday, now I don't even see you as a Weinberg boy anymore. I see you as uh, <laughs> something more special. This has been a great, beautiful honoration. I wish you only the best, young man. You are our future. I believe children are our future. You teach them well, you let them lead the way. Show them, I, I, mean, I don't know what the other lyrics are, but it's beautiful. All the best for you. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to go sort my teeth out. I'm going to go sort my teeth out. Thank you very much, sir. Bye bye, thank you. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> oh, there you go, Tando. A rather, a, a rather special interaction for your Monday night. It was your, indeed. Cricketing career. Um, while uh, we wait, I'm not sure where Alan's got to, but um, while we wait for him to return, uh, so you touch down Durban next week, and in between riding the waves and uh, enjoying me back at the coast, do you have kind of a next 18 months, couple of years plan, what you'd like to do, what you'd like to be, how the Tando and Tini story is going to play out? Um, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself, you know, but I do have those personal goals that I want to achieve in the next 24 months. Um, so I wouldn't want to put them out there. So I'd rather keep those to myself and just surprise you guys as time goes on. 
I'm not sure you're going to surprise us too much, to be honest, because there's clearly a lot of talent there. Uh, but uh, we will watch and we will await. Uh, ha have you been converted? I don't know if you managed to catch while you were away, Alan. Uh, Tanda got to chat uh, to Dominique van der Volt, and uh, I think he redeemed himself from his earlier issues of uh, the Weinberg Westerford. Uh, this is a young man who knows uh, when to be respectful, when to push the boundaries. I thought he treated Van der Volt, who, let's be honest, is a is a tricky character at the best of times. Uh, you treated him particularly well. And for me, uh, now I feel like we're, we're friends again. I'll be watching all your TikTok videos. Uh, <laughs> I will. I, honestly, I'm a convert. <laughs> all right well uh, that leaves us simply to say uh Tando, thank you so much uh good luck with the move down to durban and so uh, enjoy down at the coast and uh we look forward to seeing that uh, that first south african jersey on the shoulders the antini legacy continuing and uh, the great deal of fun as you bit by bit start picking off your father's records and then just phone him to remind him what's just happened perfect we'll do so thank you very much thank you for having me <laughs> Tando Intini, there we go. Look, he's, he's a fabulous cricketer, but he's also just a great young man, isn't he? Absolutely. And it is, I, what I'm liking about the show is we've seen, you know, uh, we've, we've gone from the veterans and all the way through to the other end of the spectrum. There is lots to be excited about uh, in our country's future. And uh, I think he's going to be one of the shining stars, isn't he? He is indeed. So there we go. Tando Ntini, he's just sick about the Titans. He joins up with the Dolphins. I want to say Sharks for a second. He's down in Durban as of next week and only 20 years of age. There is a lot of this story to come. Uh, next week, uh, Alan Committee, I'm not saying we will have Kevin Peterson on the show, but I'm not saying we won't have Kevin Peterson on the show. I'd just like to leave it out there for people to decide and make up their own minds if that's all right. I think that's a perfectly acceptable thing. I assume that we are and not always. Wow. Uh, and that's probably the best thing about it. One way or another. I didn't there have is. an end to that sentence, if I'm honest. Just thinking <laughs> about KP made me think, no, stuff it. There's not even an end to that sentence. <laughs> All right. Well, have a wonderful, wonderful week. Enjoy not watching another week of IPL and join us again next Monday night for two full tosses brought to you this evening by the Richie Ryle Museum of Cricket Art. Good night.